So if we come here, we are going to go first and foremost to find the link to the product on our website that we just found, right? So make sure that you're not doing the, the cart one, that you wanna find the actual link to the product uh, on Bed Bath & Beyond or whatever website it is, okay? You're gonna put, paste that into the link to the product right there, okay? Now let's go to Amazon, cause I don't need this anymore. We're gonna go to Amazon, we're gonna get the name of the item. So we can identify it in two ways. We can either identify it by the name of the item on Amazon or the ASIN, which is the product identifier on Amazon get the ASIN, you scroll down so you see like all these details here, find the one that says ASIN and copy that, paste that in right there. And that way you're just going to have all this data so that when you actually need to come back and source this item, you can find it on your spreadsheet by literally searching again. So control F is search on PC. I don't know what the actual search uh, on Mac is, but it's something very similar. So let's say somebody orders an ASIN on Amazon. Well, you take that ASIN from your Amazon order and you paste it into your spreadsheet. Bam, it's going to fi find it. Even if you have like thousands of products here, it's just going to pop into the, to this one really fast. And then, oh, you know, this is the link where I source that, right? It's very, very easy to actually keep track of, okay? Now your supplier is gonna be Bed Bath and Beyond. We'll just go Bed Bath. Because I cannot type Bed Bath and Beyond. Doesn't really matter. You just wanna know where your suppliers are. I like to keep track of that, um, obviously. So if you need that in the future, also like to keep track of it to start slowly seeing like where I'm sourcing from more and which you know stores I tend to, are, are, tend to be better suppliers for me. So now we have all that information right there. Now we need one more thing. We need the minimum price, okay? And why is this important? Well, it's important for our repricer specifically when we go set that repricer up, okay? And we're gonna show you that in the next lecture. Lecture. So I've already covered this previously, but when you're in the FBA calculator originally, right? And you put your item price in, which we deemed to be 55 bucks roughly on Amazon, that's what it's selling for. And we deemed our item price on Bed Bath & Beyond to be $39, which shows us when we put it in the FBA calculator that we do indeed have a net profit margin of $7.74. And our margin right here is 14% roughly, okay? But what happens if this price tanks on Amazon and the buy box price goes down? We need to know what our minimum price is so we can then put that minimum price into our repricing software so that it's not actually going to ever go below that price so we never lose money on a product, okay? So you might think like, okay, like I'm will, I'm not willing to take any lower than $7. Well, then your minimum price stays $54.99, right? I always go low because I'm interested in the sales to improve my metrics because I think that that makes a long-term difference. The more you start selling on Amazon, typically, speaking, the more you'll get sales in a lot of ways, they reward sellers who sell well. So even if you're taking like a dollar profit, and I'm only spending 39 bucks, which isn't a lot to me, it might be to you and you might not have a lot of credit or a lot of cash flow, and that's totally fine. Then obviously you're going to approach this differently. I'm going to find my minimum price by taking this down a little bit. So let's say like if somebody drops the buy box price to $45 am I still profitable? Okay, I'm pretty much break even right there, so that's fine. That's probably what I'd set my minimum price to be, and I'd make that sale. If it ended up being a net margin there, I'd make the sale, and then I'd remove it from my inventory. You can go a little higher. You can say, like, I'm willing to take, like, $49 potentially, and then, okay, you're still making a $3.50 profit margin here, which is a 7% margin. It might even be, like, a 12% margin after your cash back, maybe even a 15% margin after your cash back and your cash back credit card. Uh, so there's a number of ways to obviously play it off the back end. But so that's why I'm willing to take lower margins here, right? So you need to play around with this item number up here to find out what you're willing to take margin wise. And then you need to find out what that number is. Okay, so we're going to say $49.99 here for this example. Actually, I'm going to go back just for just for uh, sake of showing you. So $45.99. And then nine cents is break even, okay? So I'm gonna say 45.99 is my break even price. And I'm gonna put that minimum price into my spreadsheet, okay? And then as you start finding more products, you're just gonna fill down the spreadsheet, right? And you're gonna have products so that you know when someone comes and buys this ASIN or this item on Amazon, you come and you source it from this actual link right here. And then it should take you to your link and you go, bam, I'm gonna buy this. So now that we found that, we need to use SKU Grid to actually go ahead and track our inventory and our prices. And like I said previously, what SKU Grid is gonna do is once you sign up for it, it's actually going to uh, allow you to track, it, it's gonna go in depending on the settings that you set up, and I'm gonna tell you to do it every single hour, and literally go back and ping that same web page and see if it's still in stock and if the price has changed. And if the price has changed, it's gonna email you and notify you so you can make those changes, okay? So you're gonna originally go into your settings right here, and that's gonna open this up right here. 
And this is how I typically set it up, right? So every hour, you can make it more if you want, but every hour is obviously good. You want it tracking your prices and your, your inventory as often as possible so that you don't get stuck like buy, you know, with somebody buying a product that's out of stock on another website, right? You want it as frequent as possible. And I also recommend um, you know, not charging for this reason because I'm recommending it as frequently as possible. I also recommend that you don't pay by how often it's doing it. I recommend that you pay by um, what's the by like the amount of products that it's tracking, right? Not the frequency. When it actually goes to make you pay when you subscribe, it's going to tell you, okay, do you want to pay by the product? And you want to pay by the product. That's definitely what you want to choose, right? Or do you want to pay by how many times it's actually checking for you? And that's not what you want to choose, right? Some people make the case because they don't check it as frequently that it's cheaper. And in that case, it is. But you always want to check it as frequently as possible because you never want to get stuck with a product that's out of stock because you never really want to cancel an order on Amazon unless you absolutely have to, okay? That's going to ding your metrics and they take it very seriously. So every hour is what I recommend. And also when you go to select and sign up for this, pay by the specific product, not by how many times it checks for you, okay? Uh, so look, it's saying like one check equals one credit, typically because I just opened up the demo account to kind of show you. Also, how many items do you want to display per page? Doesn't really matter, I just put it at 250. Um, if you have more products, you can go down if you want to do that. It tends to be a little bit slower the more products that you have. So I, I would recommend like 250 or 500 would be a good kind of you know estimate there. Um, and then I say yes here, I say no here. I say maximum days, uh, before it dispatches from my supplier is seven. That just means like the handling time. Um, you can make this lower if you want. Um, display stock as a color, I keep that normal and everything else pretty much is normal here. And then you wanna save your settings. The main thing that you're doing here is you're setting this up to ping every single hour so that it's gonna let you know, okay? And then it's gonna email you right here when you go to notifications. And then you're gonna put your email in here, notifications, and then go down again, send notifications every hour because it's checking every single hour, what to include in your emails, make sure that, sure that yours is set up like this, right? And then you're gonna save the settings. And then it's gonna email you to the email that you put in here every single hour if something has changed. If it hasn't changed, you won't get any emails, okay? So that basically lets you get notifications via email every single time something goes out of stock, which is very, very important, and every single time a price change, which is also obviously very, very important. So now we wanna go back and add that item into our inventory, okay? So we're gonna go add single item here. For reference ID, I usually recommend putting the ASIN in uh, and where you sourced it because it's already gonna have uh, your specific title in there, okay? It's already gonna know that. So I'm gonna say like, this is, uh, what was this? This was Bed, Bath and Beyond. So I know where I sourced it. And then the ASIN right there. Um, let's go grab the ASIN. And the ASIN, okay? And then obviously you're gonna need the supplier link. You already got that right here. So we're gonna right click this and copy the supplier link and we're gonna paste it in here. And it's gonna, look, it identifies Bed Bath & Beyond product identified. And then you're gonna hit save. Those are the only two things that you really need to do. A reference ID, so you can obviously identify the product, which isn't really relevant. I just kind of like to set it up this way. And a link to the supplier uh, where the actual product is and that URL specifically where you source that product. So if it's a variation, make sure you click on that specific variation. If it's a size, make sure you click on that specific size so the URL changes. Grab that specific URL put it into your spreadsheet and then put it into this software right here. And then it will ping that specific URL and check the, the price and the stock availability and let you know if something changes. And then you're gonna hit save and it's really that simple. And that's pretty much how you set up SkewGrid. It's very, very easy to set up. I took you through the settings. I took you through how to set up the notifications. Um, and I also took you through how to actually add a product. Sign up for the free trial of SkewGrid, grab it so you can start tracking your inventory. That is crucial, okay? You need to be tracking your inventory because if something goes out of stock, you can't play around with that on Amazon. If something goes out of stock and you can't source it, you're going to have to cancel orders. And at too many canceled orders, it's going to get your account shut down and suspended and they're going to keep all your money. It won't, if you track it with SkewGrid, that won't happen to you, okay? But if you don't and you try to go without this and manually track or just, you know, say like, screw it, I'm not going to track at all, that's when you're going to run into problems.